great to see everyone here again today. So I think there are four of you. I'm going to start. I have a whole different setup going today. Um, my name is Nicole Petrandria Huff for CocoHuff.com, C-O-C-O-H-O-U-G-H, which you know already if you're here. Um, and I've been a kitchen designer for the past 18 years, and now for the past almost three months, I've been sharing my love of cooking on these live stream Tuesday night videos. So tonight, though, we're doing something totally different. I hope it's something um, that's helpful and just fun for everyone. We're going to um, not cook for one night. I think I've been cooking nonstop, even after Thanksgiving, using leftovers, and I'm sure everyone needs a little bit of a break before we start holiday season type stuff. So we're going to take a look around the kitchen, um, mostly just like some of my favorite things and maybe a little bit of inspiration. And I don't, you know, I'll try to do sort of high level. And if you have questions, dive in. Like I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to show you more of, you know, I could talk for hours about this kind of stuff. So um, dive in with any questions you have. And I'm also thought it would be fun to look at some of the things I bought or received this year for the kitchen as maybe a gift guide idea. So I have about six, seven, eight things. Some of them I'll just mention as we go around the kitchen and some I'll just show you at the end. Just some small things. I mean, these are things that make me happy, just these small kitchen items and food items. And it's always fun to see, um, you know, what people have as well as maybe something to give away for the holidays. So, as I said, if you have questions, like what's in that drawer, or what is that made of, or like, I will try to answer every question I can. I, 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 like I said, I love talking about this. So we, the first thing I wanna say as a designer is like the starting point for coming up with the kitchen is really about the people that live there. So, you know, how do you like to cook? How do you like to entertain? How do you live? Do you have children? Like all these questions that make a difference in terms of what the end design should look like and how it should function besides the regular technical information and the aesthetic decisions and all that. So I feel like that's what I want to focus on in my kitchen is why did I make the decisions I made? This kitchen is 10 years old um, and I'm going to do this week also a renovation story video because it was, it was not a pretty story. So it was like an unplanned, um, we would have done it eventually, but we were forced to do this renovation because of a burst pipe 10 years ago. And it was done under duress, but it turned out okay. So let's go over here. This camera should be following me on its own and hopefully that's going to work out. Um, so when I say, I hope you can still hear me too. Um, and I have your comments here, hopefully. But when I say, um, you know, how do you like to work and live and all that, the one thing for me that is the most important is I have to be able to see everything in my environment. And um, hi, Teresa. I'm going to talk about you later. Um, but for me, being able to see everything in my environment and grab it when I need it and just when it's washed, stick it back where it belongs without hassle and without like, kind of wondering where things are, is the most important thing. So for me, it's like out of sight, out of mind. I end up buying stuff again. I can't remember what I have. Um, so that was my first thought when we started the kitchen is I want everything where I can reach it. So the first thing we did was design this whole stove wall around these pot racks. So I don't know if you even have been able to see this on any of the videos. Um, hi, Stacy. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear the camera is following me. This is cool technology, by the way. Um, which I'll post a link to, but we, I did these four pot racks. So all of my pots and pans hang on these racks. This was all done when the walls were open because of this flood. So we were able to block for the pot racks and for the shelves as well. So as a designer, so 10 years ago, I had been designing already for eight years. And you know, when I was, this was thrown upon me, I was like, of course I can do it. And then as I thought about it, I was like, it's almost like you know too much. So I had to sort of think through the products I knew and the ideas I had and like, well, this is a very old house. It's a 120 year old house. So I wanted to keep that charm with some modern updates. 
But the reason I say this is because two of the products I knew I loved and wanted from the beginning were this stove and this hood. So this stove is by La Cornu. It's the La Cornu Albertine range. And by the way, any products I mention is just because I love them. I have no affiliation with this, but I will post some um, associate links later, which I would be very happy if you would click on and help support what I'm doing on Tuesdays. But um, this range, I just love it mainly for you know, the aesthetic of it. I have always adored it. And I was able to put that in here as well as this hood with brass trim. So the main point being that everything, all the pots and pans as I'm cooking, I can access as well as the graters and the, um, the spider scooper and what else, my strainers are over there. And it just makes life so much easier for me as I'm cooking. And then I have, you know, junk drawer. Everybody has a junk drawer. Um, this one is my Cuisinart. What else? The juicer. And then the, down there are some lids and things. And over here are all of my cooking utensils, mixing bowls, and baking, um, baking dishes and casseroles and things like that. So that's that wall. So then speaking of everything open, all of our dishes and glassware and everything are on these open shelves. So when I originally designed it, I had this idea for these very ornate Victorian, so my taste is more modern even now than it was then, 10 years ago, but I had these scrolled ornate iron um, brackets designed and the builder was like, that's never gonna work because these are marble shelves. So between the marble and the dishes and everything, we had to support the weight. So we ended up with custom steel brackets, which have been fantastic all this time. I shouldn't like, have to knock on wood when I say things like that. Um, but again, so it just keeps me in line as well. I have, you know, my four wine glasses, four martini glasses, um, all white dishes and clear things so that it stays neat while being open. I like that. So what else? Please ask questions as we go. I this is something else I had been selling in my work up to that point and I had to have. So this was, a, this is a Miele built-in coffee maker that's like near and dear to my heart. And we're gonna talk about coffee again later on too. You'll see I have like an obsession. But this one is built into the wall. It's plumbed into the wall so you never have to fill it with water. And it grinds the beans for you for every cup and makes the coffee fresh and then disposes of the beans. Well, eventually you have to dispose of the beans, but it does that all for you and it makes really great coffee. So this is the coffee maker and this is the matching microwave. So these are 10 years old now. They make them a little bit more updated and I just pray that they stay with me because then, you know, you have to replace both. If they go, they look slightly different. And um, below, you can't really see this the way the camera is, but I have utensils here, serving pieces, water bottles. I have two spice drawers. One is, this is gonna sound so nerdy, but one is like A to G, G to H, and the rest is H to Z with spices in two drawers. And maybe I'll do it up close to that sometime for anyone who's interested. And then two Tupperware drawers, a small one and a big one for like the little Tupperwares and the big Tupperwares. So, okay. Oh, Stacy, thank you for giving me compliments while you makes me like, thank you. Um, so over here, let me bring you with me a little bit more. Isn't that good? This is the refrigerator. And, um, you know, my kids were really little 10 years ago. And I also just thought it was a fun thing to continue the black and white theme that I ended up doing um, the white cabinetry around the, the doors with magnetic chalkboard in the middle. So these are steel chalkboard panels on both the refrigerator and the freezer, which we've had a lot of fun with over the years. And we've put, you know, recipes, to-do lists, the kids have done their homework on there. Um, what else? I mean, you know when kids are little, they draw and then it's, it, you cannot erase whatever it is. So there have been things on there for years from friends who moved away. Um, it's been a fun thing to have. So we love those chalkboards. And then next to that, to finish this wall, is my pantry. So this, I recently reorganized. 
I have um, you know pastas and cereal, some drinks and sports drinks and things for the kids, grains, coffee and hot cocoa, tea. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I have an embarrassing amount of tea. And my good friend Adrian, who owns a tea company, and Mari Tishi, used to, well, I used to buy them and she would give me things that I have so much of in Mari Tea, which is amazing. Um, snacks down here and all of the like tin foil and wraps and things like that over there. So, hi Diana. Oh, thank you. Everyone's liking my hair. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving too, Diana. Um, so this is our seating area. This never really got built in. We sort of got project exhaustion at some point. At this, you know, like I said, we were living in a hotel. I'll tell this whole thing on the next video that I'm going to record, but it was not fun. But I, I like the way it turned out. I ended up getting an, um, an antique sewing machine base on eBay. I don't think you can really see that right now. And then just this top from Ikea that we stained cleated it to the wall and put benches next to it. And it's been a cozy place to sit all this time. So we're almost done actually with the kitchen part. Um, hi, Carrie Oliva. I miss you too. I'm happy to see you here from Charlottesville. Um, oh, I'd love to talk to you later. So this wall, we didn't do right away. I kind of needed to decide that's the other thing. I think when you move into a space or you're creating a space, you really need to sometimes like meditate on now, you've done some of it, what do you need or live in a space for a while before you know what you actually need. So I ended up after a while having this piece built and it, it helps me. In some ways I can be super organized down to a micro level and in some ways I struggle with trying to keep things in one place. So this has, one side is all of our sweet stuff and baking stuff and one side is all savory. So, and I've recently put these like stickies in the door. This is turning into an organizational video. <laughs> but I have, um, you know, greens and sugar and popcorn and all this. And, um, oh, I'll show you actually, this is one, it's not really a gift, it's more of a gift to yourself. But, so. These huge containers that I just got have been so great. They're enormous, they just fit. But you know when you have a container and you pour the bag of flour into it and then it doesn't all fit and you're like, well now what do I do with the other half of the bag? So these are enormous and you can fill them with at least two bags of flour or sugar and I love them. And they came with these little chalkboard labels. So those are a good thing. I'll put a link to that on this video as well. I have four of those. And then these little OXO pop-up things too. And then this side is like savory things. Hi Kelly and Melissa and Jean. Oh my goodness, so many people. Thank you for coming today. Um, yeah, ask me questions if you have them. Oh, Carrie says some of her clients should be watching. Carrie does beautiful rooms by Carrie, right? organization and rearranging people's space for, to make it more beautiful. Um, I would love it if you would show them this. And yes, um, the OXO, did you say from Container Store? Yes, the OXO ones are from Container Store, or Amazon. Those big ones I got on Amazon and I'll post a link for you as well. Hi Gail, thank you for joining also. Um, so this is the savory side and I've actually started putting um, our foods like pantry storage foods in an app because during the initial like pandemic I bought a lot of extra canned goods and stuff and then you don't know what you have so um, then you keep buying the same things over and over so there's an app that I've started using and you barcode scan it and then it tells you if you remember to look what you have still so these are like um, vinegars and oils salts peppers dried mushrooms and peppers dried you know chili peppers soups, all of our savory stuff. Whoops, the camera stopped tracking me. <laughs> um, and then, actually more exciting than this, are these little drawers that I love so much when I was talking about being micro-organized. Um, that each one has its own little purpose. So these are sunglasses. This is like masks or less. Now there's a screwdriver in there. More masks. And on th that's more recent, obviously. And then on this end, I have all of the extracts. This is like coffee flavor extract. Hello, camera. My camera has lost me. There I am. I 
hope I haven't lost you. It's not recognizing my face. Hold on one second. Do you recognize my face? Yeah. Okay. Coffee extract, all of our extracts. Um, food colorings and flavorings. Oh no. Here's where technology can go wrong. I think I have to keep my face towards the camera. Um, extracts and flavorings. I have birthday candles in one. I have piping bags and tips for cookie decorating and stuff like that in another and things like that. So all those little niggly things that you're like, where do I store this? And they end up in bags or I don't know. I always have trouble like, where do you keep them? And I have more baking stuff in my basement too. So the bottom half, similar idea. There's another row of these little drawers. And then I have my clear shoe boxes of cookie cutters by holiday and fun stuff like that, vacuum sealer and all that. So that's the basic tour of the kitchen. Um, what else can I even tell you? Oh, I should show you the island. I'm gonna try and take you over here so you can see the island from here. Let me know if this works. I think I'm gonna to have to walk backwards. Can you see? Maybe. So the island, the other cabinets are black. The island, <laughs> John's talking about my tech. It's always a challenge every week. The, uh, the main cabinets are white, the island is black. And we have these baskets that you can maybe see. Um, they're wicker baskets that have the onions, potatoes, um, you know, like cold storage type stuff in them which has really been handy just to have that at your fingertips and a place to keep it away off the counter. And then I have a mixer stand, which I don't use for my mixer anymore. I have my mixer on the counter over here. Um, although it's a great thing to have. It keeps it out of the way and this lifts up and you can run your mixer and then put it back um, you know, out of sight. I've been storing my Instant Pot in there instead. So I decided the mixer looks nice on the counter. I have a nice bright yellow mixer and I've been putting my Instant Pot in that cabinet. And then this is all of my trays and cutting boards and another oven here and two more baskets. So that's our island with seating on the other side. And in terms of materials, I feel like I did a little bit of an experiment for myself because I would tell a client looking at marble or soapstone, you know, you have to be aware of how they'll react to foods or wear in general. And um, for myself, I like things to look lived in. I like a patinaed uh, look, so I thought I would try it. And I did. So the counter on the island is marble. It does have some etching, but it's a beautiful piece of stone. And these counters are soapstone which sometimes I oil and sometimes I don't. So right now they're on the grayish side. And if you, actually the photo I posted today, they were beautifully oiled. So if you oil them, then they are dark black and, and shiny. So that's that. Hi, Rena. This is great. On the iPad now I can see who's here again. For a couple of weeks I haven't been able to. So that's the kitchen tour. If you have questions, you can ask me now. You can ask me, um, anytime really by DM or you know if I know most of you you can just text me uh, if I have a small list of things that have made me kind of happy this year I mean I, I love cooking stuff I'm not really like a gadget person I don't buy a lot of um, one job type things I feel like they take up a lot of space and you've seen how I have it like if something doesn't have its place it makes me nervous um, Teresa asked, what size is your KitchenAid? I don't know the size, is it six quarts? I think it's six quarts. Um, it's the one that goes up with a crank. So I can double check that for you and even post a link to it though, but it's the larger size one, which I like. I used to have a smaller one and I used to have two separate bowls for it, which I think is a good idea. So if you're making two batches or something that needs egg whites beaten first and then you want to fold them in, you, sometimes you need two bowls for your KitchenAid. Um, but I found that I was frequently making things larger than the small bowl could handle. So I think it's six quarts or seven. I have to double check that for you. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go over here actually where the KitchenAid is and show you this pan. This is, oh for God's sake. <laughs> 
I'm back to you. There we go. Oh, that's easier. I'll just turn it. All right, I'm back. Um, it gets confused when I walk away. So one of the things, some of these things are gifts actually, which is always nice, but this is an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. The brand is Amazon Basics. So this is under $100 and it is a really nice piece. It has this, you know, this metal um, handle to it. It has a heavy weight. It has the enameled inside as well. So for making a stew or braising or all the things we've been talking about, on the show it's it's really a nice piece and it's at a price point that you could have more than one or different sizes where there are some brands many brands actually that are so beautiful but they're super expensive so I thought this was a great thing and I love this navy blue color that has made me super happy this year for everyone that joined kind of in the middle of the kitchen part part two we're doing um you know happy kitchen items that I acquired this year as a gift guide. So, and like I said, I don't have any affiliation with these brands or companies or just things I like, but I do have some affiliate links that I'll post. And if you click on those, that helps support the videos. And I appreciate that. Um, so I just like to show what's making me happy. Stacy's asking, is the full backsplash wall tiled behind the shelves? Yes, it is. So this behind the, um, the range and the pot racks and behind these shelves and these shelves, the whole wall is tiled to the ceiling. And those are actually a, um, subway ceramics, subway tile, which are like handmade, beautiful subway tiles in the plain white. Who's <laughs> gotta support, thank you, John. John's saying he likes the kitchen and to support the links. Well, that would be great, thank you. Um, so also in the cast iron department, I mentioned this in one of the first videos. This is also a gift, I think from my brother who's on the call right now. This is just a Lodge brand cast iron pan. It's heavy and beautiful. And I think like if you're gonna have a cast iron pan, this is the size and shape to have. And um, for browning meat, for, for browning anything actually, you cannot beat this surface, it holds its heat. Um, you kind of heat them very slowly and then they retain heat forever. So when you go to sear your steak, it's super hot and it's not, you're not worried about like overheating a nonstick pan or something like that. Um, when we first did searing, we did it in a stainless pan, which is also great, but it conducts heat in a different way. This one really holds on to it. So a stainless steel pan to me is something I never had before. And um, it really, is a great workhorse in your kitchen. And you don't have to wash it, which actually is, <laughs> to, to me, a great thing. You kind of, you scrub it out with salt and lemon and rinse and then oil and then put it back on a burner to kind of heat and absorb the oil and it's ready to go for the next time. You don't ever want to wash it. Stacy's asking, oh, I love these questions. Stacy's asking about the lighting in the kitchen. That's a great question. Um, so I have one, two, three, three main kinds of lighting. I, ha I don't know how to really show it. Let's see, you can see. All right, I have recessed lights in the ceiling. Um, I have these two, let's kick you over here. These two pendants over the island, which really, to me, bring the most light. And that's the one, if I walk in the room, it's always on. There's a light above the eating area. And this one's not on, but a little light above, whoa, camera work, above the sink as well. And the range hood has lighting in it too. Um, so I, I like a lot of light. I tend to find that that is like almost enough for me. I think maybe if I were doing it again, I would add one or two more recess lights. Um, there are seven, I think. Just to be honest, you know, I think I like a lot of lighting. So when I have these video lights in here, I'm like, oh, this feels good. Like, I really feel like I can see what I'm doing. It's a great question, though, because also I don't have upper cabinets. So there's no under cabinet light on the countertop, which I don't find the countertop to be dark, but it's just one of the things to take into consideration. Hi, Nikki. Thank you for joining us. We're talking kitchens, if you have any questions about kitchens or anything here, and we're talking holiday gifts as well. So you're gonna laugh at my next one. 
because I just went over this Mila beautiful coffee maker that I love and I've loved it for 10 years but this year I thought um, I need something more no <laughs> I really I thought in the morning when it's cold and it's snowy the second my feet hit the floor my dog is like we need to go outside so I've, I've needed a little bit more luxury in my life. So I had my eye on this coffee maker that I'm gonna show you forever. And I thought, this is my most controversial purchase. I thought, should I, I don't know. And it went on sale and I was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So this is it and I just love it. So I thought I would show you. I keep this next to my bed. <laughs> Am I making confessions that are, but I do and I love it. And it's called, it's a Nespresso Virtuo Next coffee maker. It's black and rose gold, which I think is so cute. And it makes really delicious coffee, like all of the Nespresso machines. And it's so simple to use, and it connects to your phone as well. But let me show you, that's a little bit up close, but you sort of saw it, and I'll link to it. But the pods um, are not the typical Nespresso pods, the little plastic like capsule shaped ones. There are these aluminum pods that have like a dome shape to them. Nespresso coffee is always terrific. I've stayed in like Airbnbs that have it. It's so good. And this one, I feel good about it because they offer this recycling program. So when you order your coffee, you order a bag as well and they recycle the aluminum and they compost the coffee. So I can, um, you know, have on my morning in peace before I take my dog out. And I just, it's like a small luxury that I just made me, it made me so happy this year. And I actually have a design client who is putting one of these in her guest room. And I was like, what a nice idea for, for your guests. So they don't, you know, when you're in someone's home and you have to go downstairs for your coffee, you're kind of in your pajamas. And I thought that was really sweet. So if anyone does end up buying one, Text DM me and I will tell you more about like my sugar and creamer situation, which I have going on so that I don't have like, you know, you don't want obviously milk in your bedroom. Um, but that has worked out really well for me and I'm enjoying it a lot. I love the guest room idea too. I think that's a really nice thing to have for your guests in your home. So that's that. Uh, and every day I just go, um, oh, I'm so happy to have this. <laughs> Oh, wait, I see some questions. Oh, John says, you go, girl. You totally deserve a... Oh, well, you totally deserve a good... That's what my parents said, too. I thought they might say, oh, that's a little extravagant. They were like, you deserve it. You deserve that cup of coffee. I was like, I do. I deserve it. Um, yeah, Jen agrees, too. Oh, every time I look down, it goes away. Stacy asks, are there any materials or designs that you recommend for every kitchen? That's a good question for every kitchen. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that a little bit. I know Stacy is very talented in design as well. So that is a challenge of a question. I'm trying to think um, offhand. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm used to, one of the things in my background is that for the first five years, I designed in Manhattan. So very frequently, you know, you didn't have room for a double pull-out trash, which I didn't even show you, double pull-out trash. Um, and the recycling bin and all of that, and you know, smaller appliances. And so I think it, like I said, it, it's so much dependent on the person, it's dependent on the home and the style and age of the home, and then dependent, of course, on your space. I actually found when I moved back to Ridgewood, all of a sudden it was like, whoa, you you know, you have the essentials and now there's all this extra room. What do you do? <laughs> so um, it, I think starting with this, the challenge of putting together like the puzzle of a small space and trying to fit the storage and all that was a good way to start. Like that you learn a lot that way and then you kind of expand off of that because when you're filling a larger space, and I think Stacy, you know this already, like you don't want to do it just, just for the sake of having cabinets. You want still a purpose and a flow and a way to fit people's lifestyles. So that does not answer your question, but I'm gonna think about that. Um, John says maybe some electrical outlets. Yes, that's true. And Gail says a big deep sink, also true. If you can fit a large deep sink, I like a 10 inch deep sink generally, um, that is a good thing to have. More than 10 inches might be hard on your back. 
but um, this one is 30 inches wide and 10 inches deep and it's been great. I also personally, not everyone agrees, maybe, but I personally, personally like a single bowl sink. And I think this has to do with when we were talking about how I organize my things in like little bits. With a double bowl, it's like, well, what do you use? What am I using this side? What am I using that side? It's too much thought going into it for me. I like just a large space and you can hide your dirty tray or whatever a little bit better. I mean, there are some sinks that are enormous and amazing. I originally wanted this farm sink on legs in here and it just wasn't going to work space-wise. And I think I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. Um, John says, a worry-free floor. Interesting. My floor is not worry-free. I did a herringbone oak um, hardwood floor, but yeah, something that you can't destroy, like a tile, those tile wood floors, those are pretty beautiful. Concrete, stuff like that is an interesting idea. So these are cool ideas. While we're talking about ideas too, I would love to know what your kitchen wish lists are. Like, do you have things that you're looking for for Christmas or the holidays or things that you are giving to people as well? I'm interested to hear other stuff too. So these are great comments. Um, all right, this next thing is a really good giftable thing. It's called the meter, meat thermometer. And I actually got this one this year, but I've been giving them as gifts for maybe four years. I think they started as a Kickstarter. So I had ordered one for my dad. It took like a year before the campaign was done and it finally came. And then I've given them a couple other times and then someone said, well, where's yours? And I said, I don't actually have one. And they gave me one. So this is called the meter. This box is a charging, it's a wooden charging box for it. And this is the whole meat thermometer. It can go on the barbecue. It can go in your oven or on the stove top. You put the, this into the meat up to this point, and then it connects to an app on your phone. So you say, you know, what you're cooking, and it tells you, you know, do you want it medium rare? Do you want it rare? It tells you where you are, and also calculates your resting time, and it knows like the ambient temperature as well. It's pretty brilliant. So these are awesome little gadgets. I think they're like $90, 80 or $90. They also make, the wooden box with like four of them in it. If you were barbecuing all different meats, that's a nice gift as well. So this one, so far the rest of them were like for yourself, but <laughs> gifts should, I always get myself a Christmas gift. I think everyone should, maybe my coffee maker is my gift this year. So the meter, I'm gonna put a link to that as well. Uh, Teresa said it's cool. It is, it really is a cool thing to have. I also have other, I have the regular probe thermometer. Sometimes it's just easier than setting it up, but if you're cooking a long-term roast or something that you just, you know, want to be able to walk away, it's great to have that on your phone. All right, what else do we have? So these are pretty recent, actually. So after the butternut squash soup video, I, I still think the blender is a great way to go for that. And we were talking about how you don't fill up your blender more than like this much with hot liquid unless, you know, cause it will splash immediately um, from the hot air in there. But I realized I don't have an immersion blender. I used to have one um, and I haven't had it in a while and I never really loved it. And I kind of researched the design of them. So the one I had before had sort of a, this has a bell shaped blade cover to it. That one had more of a, how would you describe it? Like the shape of an Oreo with like holes in the side. And I would just always end up covered in soup. And I was like, I don't really love this as, an, as a design. So this one, this is by Braun. It's really, the shape of it helps it to be neater and cleaner. And um, oh, my brother's adding to the meat conversation. David, I shouldn't say my brother every time David is adding and saying, don't follow the USDA settings on the meter. That's true in general. USDA settings for meat temperatures tend to be much higher. This is like what we talked about with the turkey too, that you, um, you know, they, they want to give you like the highest safety guideline for meat and poultry. And you should Google each kind and just probably five to 10 degrees below is what you're going to, we're going to want. Um, yes. So, oh, 
for goodness sakes, I can't look away. I'm gonna stare you in the eye and not look away. So this Brun um, Immersion Blender, you know, this goes on here, has been fantastic. And it also, I like this feature, it has a whisk attachment for it. It has this little um, chopper. I haven't even used this yet, actually. So this can then, there's a blade in there. This connects, and then you have, take this attachment off, that's for the whisk. And, you know, you just like a little Cuisinart, but then you don't have to wash your whole giant Cuisinart or blender if you're just chopping some herbs or things like that, which I love. And it also has this smoothie cup, which I thought was fantastic too. So that one is making me happy already. I don't have a hand mixer either. We've been doing it either in the KitchenAid or with like a one of these old fashioned things. And I'm actually very pleased to have this. We made whipped cream on Thanksgiving and it was like, well, this is much easier than <laughs> churning it the old way. Um, so that's another one. Let me make sure, let me look at my list. Storage containers we looked at. Garlic press. Oh, and Teresa, you're gonna like this. I'm gonna talk about the knife too. Um, so the garlic press, I think, Teresa, you asked me about both of these things. I hope you're still here. Um, one of the very first videos, maybe the shrimp scampi video, I was chopping on my garlic and someone, I think it was Teresa, asked me if I had a garlic press, which I did not, and I have had them in the past. They used to be made of aluminum, and I don't love things that you can't put in the dishwasher. That's another one of my, like, I like to grab and go kind of, things um so oh Teresa is here good so I recently got this one it's also by OXO it's so great it's heavy duty it has like a nice weight to it and it does its job which is it presses the garlic so in that video I originally said and I was reading about this yesterday too that there's some debate just putting the garlic through a press make it more bitter and I'm in this New York Times cooking group on Facebook that is just, we, we they, everyone knows, argues about the smallest minutia of cooking all the time. And there was a discussion about this yesterday as well. But I find that if you're using a small amount or if you're using it in a large quantity of stew, you're not gonna taste bitterness from using a garlic press and it can make your job much easier. So I used this on the turkey video to make a compound butter with garlic and it was great. And I just, I like the weight of it, it feels, heavy and sturdy, and it goes in the dishwasher. I love things that go in the dishwasher. John's liking the tools. He said he's not a cook, but he's a gizmo guru. It's true, it's fun to have things that do the job and make your job easier. So um, this one, we did talk about another time as well, but Teresa and I have been DMing about this knife for two months now. <laughs> so I think um, she had asked where it was from and then it went back on sale and I told her and she got one. And then I was kicking myself that I didn't get another one. But then this week, this is from Food52, which is such a nice website. They have just beautiful style, beautiful recipes, tableware, all sorts of things. And um, I hope it's still true, but at least as of yesterday, they were offering $25 off of $100. And I was like, I shall have another one. So I bought another one. Um, this is just the nicest knife. It comes in pink, blue, gray, and maybe another color that I can't remember, which I like, it's something different. And it has a nice weight to it. It cuts super smoothly. It's full tang, which is what you want, so it doesn't, you know, the handle can never break off. I put this in the dishwasher as well. I know, Teresa, you don't, you're not supposed to probably, but um, I find that if I do that, it's, it's okay. The handle holds up to it and you can sharpen it and it still works. Teresa says, I love it. It's a game changer. It really, it truly is a game changer. It's the greatest knife and it's not that expensive. You know, some knives are very, very pricey. So I love this one so much and I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna put a link to that as well. And they have a whole set in these colors I can't remember what the fourth color is, but um, so you can get the bread knife, a paring knife, the chef's knife, and something else I don't remember. Maybe that's it. So, what else do we have? This year is also the year I got an Instant Pot, which was also a gift, which was super nice. And it's over here. You won't be surprised to hear that there's turkey stock in there. Um, that's one of the reasons I love it, besides the um, 
instant pot aspect, the pressure cooking aspect. Um, <laughs> Teresa, going back to the knife, she's saying it's still new. Give her a couple weeks. It'll go in the dishwasher. Don't do it. I don't want to be a bad influence. And Dina's here. Hello. Welcome. Um, so the Instant Pot, I mean, this is nothing new to anyone to be talking about as a gift, but it is a great kitchen tool and it kind of is also a game changer. Um, I use it for the pressure cooking setting for stews and beans and things like that, that where you want the flavor to come together quickly, where it, normally, you know, it might be hours of simmering and then better if it sits overnight, that kind of thing you can do, you can achieve that pretty quickly in most cases. Um, and then like what I'm doing right now is there this turkey stock has been simmering on the slow cooker setting for 20 hours. So it just stays in there. I can leave the house as opposed to doing it on the stove top, which is also perfectly fine. But, um, you know, you can't leave the house if you're doing that. And I find that when we did this stock video, we said, you know, four hours is the minimum, which it did smell and look amazing in four hours, but if you can guess, get, get more connective protein and more calcium out of the bones, the more the better, up to a point. At some point it starts to get like a little, you're done. You know it's done and all the goodness is out of all those things. So, oh, Carrie says a new small kitchen addition are the lemon and lime savers by OXO. And she, oh yeah. She put a link there for anyone who wants to see them. I think what you're talking about are like the little round caps that go over the um, the cut lemon or lime. Those are great. They make them for avocados as well, which are always a challenge to keep if you don't need a whole avocado. And um, yeah, that's a good tip. I would love to know anyone else's tips. And I have one more new product in my kitchen. Um, I find I have I probably have to call my um, non-stick pan collection a little bit but I find that most of them are wonderful when you buy them you're like whoa this egg is like <laughs> and then after a year or so they're not as wonderful but uh, one of the brands that I find that is great and seems to last a long time is called green pan so I got this one uh oh I looked away stayed with me. Um, this one is new to me. It's a green pan. It's just a little size for, you know, a single person omelet or reheating things, but it is super nonstick and it's doing a great job so far. So I always have loved also scam pan in the past and those go on sale as well. They'll do like a deal through their website for $99 or whatever for the larger size one. But like I said, most brands do eventually start to stick and then it's time to replace but this is the second green pan I've had and they last for a long time and they're great oh and Carrie says they also made onion savers that you can put over your cut onion that's another good idea these are the little things you're kind of like you either use saran wrap over and over my dog always loves to bark during these videos <laughs> um, you know it just saves the stuff in your kitchen so that's it. That's what I have planned for today. So I would love to know, first of all, like I said, I will put links. I never answered Stacy's question, but I, I got a little stumped. That was such a good one. And I'm going to think about it. I have some plans for, you know, kitchen design guidelines. We did the turkey timeline. I have plans to add to that for next year, but I also would like to start making, um, you know, if you're thinking about doing a kitchen, what are the first considerations? What or how do you sort of know what you can and can't do in your space? So if you have questions about that, let me know because I'd love to know what people sort of wonder about a little bit more. And um, you know, any other questions at all, let me know. And keep posting your kitchen wish list ideas here. If you can, we can do like a second product video at some point later on. So that's it for today. I'm so happy that you're all here. Um, we had such a fun turnout today. The next three weeks are devoted to the holidays. I'm still piecing together exactly what we'll make, but I'm thinking at least one, you know, fancy holiday dinner, at least one holiday breakfast type day, because we always do a lot of like puff pastry and egg, fancy egg things. So that's going to be a challenge. And maybe we'll do a dessert. I don't know. Let me know, um, again, 
you know, what kinds of things are you looking to make too? So I'm really happy to see you all. Thank you for being here with me today. This was so much fun and I can't wait to see you again next week. In the meantime, I'll be on Facebook and YouTube at like Coco Huff and CocoHuff.com. And if you would be so kind to go to my YouTube, I, some of you have done already, and like that, I would love that as well so we can get some attention to these videos when I post them. So have a great week, everybody, and I will see you soon. Bye.